That's what I want to talk about. Well, at least part of the way I'll talk about that. And my, my bell's going to go off as well. It'll be like the bell when class has started. You know, back when we were in, what, high school is when bells happened? Yeah, because you didn't get them in yeah. college. There weren't bells for... <laughs> yeah. So if you're listening no. right now, no. and, you, if, and you hear the bell, that means class has started. But right now, I can just play around. Class isn't here yet. I can do whatever I did before there were cell phones <laughs> in high school. I can't remember. <laughs> ah, anyway, so today we're going to talk about a feedback. There it is. See? I got started right on time. Good morning, class. Put your cell phones away. Let's get started. Doug, pay attention. You know, stop playing on your phone, Doug. Forget that. <laughs> All right, let's talk about feedback loop. What is a feedback loop? Um, so this is kind of part of lean manufacturing. Quick and dirty illustration. So to manufacture items as quick and easy as possible, actually it should be kind of like three. So one, two, three. What um, many manufacturers have found is that you want to shorten the feedback loop as much as possible. So you create right here and then you let me see, test here, and then what, you fix, and then you keep doing the, and then you improve, fix slash improve, learn, you know, everything's right here, right? Create, test, fix, improve, and learn, and then create something else, test, fix, prove, and learn. And the smaller you can get this feedback loop, the quicker it is, right? Um, the faster that you can repeat this improve cycle. That's what we're trying to do here. So, example. Let's say that we need to work on heads <laughs> or hands. Uh, hey, or or and Don. Uh, welcome. Morning, Josh. Oh, Josh is here. Good morning, gentlemen. Wow, you're early today. Thanks for joining. Yeah, the girls the girls don't have school today, so I'm I'm at home with the the little ladies. Nice, nice. We we know who is in charge today at your household. Yes. Well, every day, <laughs> every day, <laughs> every day. <laughs> so here's an example of a faster feedback loop right now. So we want to get better at these guys' heads. You know how to draw these darn heads, at least structurally in this sense. When we are in the creation process, we could create, you know, the beginning of one head, you know, maybe the Loomis method, and then we get into the details, and then we say, oh, I like this a lot, and I want to make an oil painting out of it, and that takes like weeks, right? And then finally we get to the test phase and then we're like, wow, that head kind of sucks. And then we're like, okay, let's do another one. So it's been like three weeks, a month, and we've only went through the feedback loop once, right? So we haven't got to that fix, improve, learn stage quicker, right? So what I'm doing here, and this is kind of a repeat of exactly what I've kind of talked about, but in a different way, what I'm doing here is I want to learn the structure of the head. I want to know where the missing ear is, as Marshall Vandriff would say. When you know form well, when you know perspective well, you can draw a head, right? And you can plot out exactly where that missing ear would be. And I'm going to guess, like, right back there. <laughs> I have no idea. 
you can triangulate it. So that's what I'm trying to learn, is structure so well that I can plot out the missing ear. Or turn the head maybe this way, so that she's looking a little bit closer, you know, right at us in some way, that kind of thing, right? Or, or, what I really wanna know is, what if, instead of the light coming from up here and hitting her in the top of the head, what if we lit her this way? How would that light flow over the form? So we're trying to learn the structure. I'm not gonna create a painting of each one of these. I'm not gonna sit here and do the drawing that takes hours and hours long. What I'm gonna do is create a method so I can get to the testing and the learning phase as quick as possible. And what we're using is Loomis. We're using Loomis. We're using, uh, eventually we're gonna be using Asaro. And uh, before that, I think I'm gonna be pulling in the Houston, <laughs> which I just gave him that name, the Steve Houston. And his book, Figure Drawing for Artists, and anything Stephen Houston does, see his gestures, they're fantastic. A simplification, of the head, thinking about the structure, focusing on the structure as much as we can, as quick as we can, so I can get the test learn phase. Any questions, class? <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop that analogy. Get to work. Yeah, get to work. Yeah, you know, I'm, <laughs> but but I'm the one that's working here. <laughs> like I'm doing all the work up in front of class. All right. Shut up, Chris, and start drawing. All right, one... This, this, this reminds me of uh, an, uh, a talk that I listened to from Anthony Jones, where he sat in on a Steve Houston demo, and Steve Houston did the same thing that you've done right now. Um, but it was, it was he, he talked for like an hour of this hour and a half class. Oh, geez. And then he took a break. And everyone in the class was really angry about this. They're like, we we paid for this class to see Steve Houston draw and paint and he's talked for an hour and now he's taking like a 15 minute break and they actually talked to Steve Houston about this they're like hey um are, are you gonna do the demo though that we're here for and he's like oh 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 yeah all right so in his typical very uh inebriated appearing way he was like all right guys just uh sit, sit down and uh get ready because uh, I'm, I'm going to paint faster than you've ever seen anyone paint in your life. <laughs> and then he busts he busts out a masterpiece in like 15 minutes, and everyone's just like, "Oh, okay, that was worth it. That was worth it." <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where's this at? Because I want to see this now. <laughs> this is this is a this was one of Anthony Jones's uh, talks. Uh, I don't remember which one exactly, but he was sitting at a computer in a conference center. Um, so if you just go to Robot Pencil, the, the YouTube channel Robot Pencil, and look oh, okay. for any of the scenes where Anthony Jones is chilling in a conference center, um, it's probably one of the only ones. <laughs> oh, too bad we don't get a visual of him actually painting, of Steve Houston actually oh, painting. Oh yeah, not Steve Houston. This is this is one of Anthony Jones's stories. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, if you want to watch, if you want to watch Steve Houston paint, you, you have to go to New Masters Academy. <laughs> well, he has uh, the good thing about what we're doing here is he has a video, like a three-hour video for free, uh, where he's just doing nothing but the structure of the head. So I'm going to be watching that again at some point and distilling all of that wonderful information down into something that I can use and you guys can see on a live stream. So. All right, one thing that I'm doing here, and Josh and Doug, I need your feedback on this, is I'm dropping the, the ellipse completely. I've started dropping that ellipse. The reason why is because <clears throat> I found that it was, okay, so we, get, we have the corner of the brow, which is the, both corners. These are the, let me zoom into here so you guys can see that. These are the most important points, right? So this identifies, you know, the angle of the brow itself, but then right above the ear also. This is, you know, I'll still do the sphere, right? We'll do the sphere, which I'm not gonna do it again because 
Now it's all looking wonky. Because usually you fit this on top of a sphere, not a head. It's, there's a difference there. And then I do these things. And it basically gives me exactly what I want, right? Um, but if I do this ellipse, I can never find a place for it to fit. And every time I do it, like let's say that I center the ellipse on this line, and this is the Loomis method, where the ellipse is centered on the line. We're down here in the cheekbone with this ellipse, right? It doesn't seem to work. And I think the cranium, like you can kind of see it here with the shadow of her hair, right? The cranium is up here in a lot of cases. Like it doesn't go below the ear. It's, you know, we got the zygomatic arch that goes back this way. It, it just doesn't seem to work. So I've been cutting it off. I've been just not doing it. Am I missing something? It's kind of a question for you guys. That's really interesting. Um, I would have to test that in the real world. <laughs> like in this is this is like the uh, like what we discussed before the, the knowing how to make a sword and being able to make a sword. There's a difference. Um, oh right, yeah. Like in theory, it looks like it it's working, especially for you. Um, in practice. I would have to try it myself to see how I liked it. Right. Yeah, I could see that. So you're looking at it more like a, a preference kind of way, right? So which way to, like, how, how like, if this helps me abstract the skull, um, you know, you know, more power to me kind of thing. Exactly. I'm using looks digital. I would say. Looks to me like the... Uh, the sketch you have, you could continue that uh, ellipse around, and it w would work just fine. It's a shortcut to uh, cut it off at the uh, temple and mm -hmm. wherever you think you should to uh, place the ear properly. Yeah. So okay. So I'm kind of looking at. Oh man, I need this. I wish I had like you know terminology for all these bones just so I can point them out. But there's this little kind of concavity here, where the skull. And it, the there's a large. Yeah. What is that called? That's the, the temporal arch, that, that flat spot. Temporal arch. See, I should know this. So this temporal arch here that goes back. But then it doesn't go below the zygomatic arch. It doesn't go below that. Let's look at a skull real quick. Because uh, I, I have it bookmarked. I can pull it up really quickly. I go to uh, Sketchfab and this awesome... Oh, are you kidding me? It did not... I did not get to it. Oh, yeah. Sketch that's awesome. There was a skull in here. Oh, exploding skull. I got to the wrong one. Of course, the exploding part is... I don't want, but... I usually have to wait for it to explode a little bit and then rewind it all the way back to the beginning. But I, I love this because... I don't need to buy a skull. Oh, there. And it's kind of perfectly lit right here as well. See the this temporal arch here. There you go. So it kind of goes up this way, and then it kind of disappears, and then the cranium actually bulges out a bit. See that bulge? Flattens off, but then, you know, we don't go go below this. That's the zygomatic arch right there. It goes right into the ear hole, just about. Um, yeah. Why the bottom of it? I, th I think. It, it is a better way to simplify, um, just to get, kind of get started. I think if you've never done the Loomis method and you're looking for, you know, kind of that understanding, I think it's good to do that. I think it's good to do this whole kind of ellipse shape. But now as... It also, it, it releases a constraint, too, so you can actually be a little more free with your construction of the head this way. Yeah, either, either that or you can take a little bit more time to, let's say, measure, you know? The next thing that I, I'm changing up 
is identifying the top of the head, like the actual top of the skull, a bit more. Like, for instance, you know, this goes into the hairline. Oh, the hairline, too. I've kind of been identifying the hairline as well. But you have to kind of imagine this when you have hair. So the skull probably goes back, you know, this way. And why am I doing this? Because the darn skull is huge, and I think I chopped it off just a little bit too much. Here's a rule of thumb. However big you think the back of the skull is, double it. <laughs> Maybe not double it, but it's, it goes back a lot further than you think. So there's the skull. Let's, let's just draw a center line all the way down the top of the skull. Maybe this goes up a bit. So you kind of have to guess this, right? Um, and this is not a great one to a, a great image to actually illustrate this on because it ends well no it is good because we have to deal with that too it's it's way up here right so let's say that we do the brow line and then let's match that angle up here for easier measurement or easier understanding like i'm not going to measure this but a visual measurement right i could quickly see that this space the entire face is less than, I mean, it's like one and a quarter of the top of the head. So the head is definitely a lot, or the top of the skull is a lot larger than the face, right? So I'll come back to my drawing and I'll say, okay, um, I need to put the skull way up here, honestly. Look how big that is comparatively. See how far we get away from this sphere shape? The more I'm looking at, at Steve Houston's book as well, the more I'm learning that, <clears throat> you know, this sphere is just not helping in a lot of ways. Well, it, it helps at the beginning, but I'm kind of getting further and further away from it. Um, I would want to maybe put the chin here. Yeah. I mean, to compare for the size of the head, for this, the entire size of the cranium, okay? I find that judging this distance versus this distance a lot easier in a lot of ways because it's you're dividing a distance in half. And I guess this is kind of an understanding that, that we all have to achieve and this kind of method really helps you understand what's easier for you in a lot of ways. Um, one of the great things about the Loomis head is if you identify the corner of the brows, you know, both corners there. Finding the center is a lot easier because you just have to put a division in between the two. And if you know anything about perspective, you know that you're going to see more of this side. Let me zoom in. More of this side than that side. Right? Um, it's a bit easier to make a division that way. Rather than saying... Um, identifying, let's say, like uh, um, maybe an arbitrary distance of the top of the brow to maybe where the hairline is, and then measuring how many hairlines down to the chin, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and the, the way the Loomis method has you get that measurement, or that idea, that generalization, it's not really a real measurement, is you have this kind of arbitrary um, ellipse, right? And your that's where your nose is, and then you double that. I, I find I find uh, I find more often than not that that is wrong. Although right here, no, it would, that wouldn't be correct here either. Because it goes back to this ellipse shape, which I didn't think was actually very helpful. I look at Loomis as basically uh, the scaffolding or the, con the construction of a head, and it's ideal. It's not. It's not meant to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, fit to any one person. But it's a. It's a starting point. Yeah, and I guess I, you know I I keep going back to that, and that's why I'm asking you guys because you know kind of keeping. Um, 
you know, the testing phase of my ideas, you know, this is part of the feedback loop I just talked about. I need someone to bounce the ideas off of and see, because you could say to me, hey, Chris, you're getting, you're getting too deep into portrait mode and not head mode, right? There's a difference. We're doing heads, not portraits. And I, I guess the argument that I would have against that, you know, doing something a little bit different here is how far off does your generalization or how far off can your generalization be before you bring it back into a real portrait? Do you, do you know what I mean? Like, for instance, because I'm thinking about this painting here. This is why we're doing everything. Um, see if I, can I hide that? This painting here. So if I did a Loomis head uh, on the side here, and it was just way far off, it was completely off from the original, there's gonna be a lot of fixing, a lot of measuring that has to be done. So how, how close does it need to be, you know? So there's a generalization, but if you have a, I, th I think if you if you have a, um, a use case for it, how close does it need to be? So that's what I keep questioning, I guess. Here, here's a good example, like this this side of the face here, okay. I think it's a perfect generalization just to do a straight line rather than trying to figure out you know, the curve of her chin because she's smiling, right? So just generalize it into one line. You know, that curve can come out at the end. Maybe it's not about exactness uh, in any, like the overall head, but just, you know, particular points that, that are the most important. Hmm. It's a lot that I'm figuring out here. Actually, I'm really testing out that, that huge forehead. Okay, next thing. Oh, I always want to keep doing these, uh, the arches of the, oh heck, I'm trying to remember what those are called. So if we go back to the skull again, this arch here of the eye socket so it's still part of the very, the, this huge bone at the front of the skull, but it goes down, meets the zygomatic arch there. And this is, this point is what we're really looking at. And on the other side, what's interesting is how you will see a sharp curve here, but then on the other side, it kind of, it curves back in a way. So all you see is just this kind of indentation. You don't see a sharp curve. Uh, and I see that over and over again on these heads. You know, here's our sharp curve here, but then on this side, it goes away from us, so you just see this indentation. Learning all kinds of cool stuff. But I, I like putting that in. Steve Houston calls it a whistle notch. Because <laughs> he's thinking of a, a cylinder with a notch out of it. So if you have, oh, I'm going to test my cylinder creation drawing. If you have a cylinder here and you see that as the head. And I guess back in the day when there were just trains or something like that, uh, Doug can... I mean, you lived then, when there was only trains. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, there was these whistles that had just a notch out of them like that. And um, he is kind of likening that to this, the side of the head, basically. It's interesting. I don't know how that would look. If you take a notch out of a cylinder, 
Here's the lines that wrap around it. Tangent. I'm, I'm totally going into a tangent here. There's the perspective of it. And say right here is the edge where it gets notched out. And then the edge on the other side where it gets notched out. And then we just erase this. Ah, we would see the bottom of that one notch. That's pretty cool. You see how I figured that out? I feel like I'm really boring this morning, getting no response. <laughs> okay, so whistle notch. We'll move on from there. <laughs> Sorry, my, uh, my my children's knocked over a bunch of stuff off of my table, so I've been I've been cleaning. I apologize. <laughs> no, no, don't apologize. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I need to learn to just talk to myself all the time. Okay, so head, neck. Uh, you know, one thing that Steve Houston says in his book, which I was like, yes, I agree 100% with that now, is to always draw a little bit of the neck and shoulders to get that all important attachment to the body. I've been doing kind of this, what I think would be a center line of the neck. I haven't studied the neck at all. I just erased it um, to kind of get an understanding of where it may be. You know, how the, <clears throat> the head actually attaches to the torso. And I think I made that forehead just, or the, the cranium, a little bit too big. Let's check it. Okay, the next thing that I've been doing that I've changed up my methodology on is how I check these things. Uh, I'll insert a layer real quick and then I'll, I will just go straight to this portrait and get a quick generalization of what I think are the most important um, the most important pieces of understanding for the structure of the head. Basically a, a loomis over the top of the head. And I'm going to guess on the size of the cranium here. Because there's a lot of hair, what I need to do is get a lot of reference of people without hair or beards. See, I, I love that kind of motion there. It's really nice. Okay, so I'll outline it real quick, do my control T and then just overlay. And I'll match up the most important point which is actually, and I, what I uh, could have done there was mark out both of the, um, <sighs> those points, man, my, I'm sorry, my language today is just not serving me well. My ability to command the English language is not there today. The corners of, two corners of the brow, I should have marked those out. That would have been a lot easier because that's what I usually line up is the two corners of the brow. And you can see right away how off I am on the size of everything here and especially the brow angle. Just everything's off in here. Um, I'm going to blame everyone else but myself. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Talking. Honestly, that, that, that is a pretty close representation, though. Oh, I've been like, so much closer the yesterday when I'm sitting here and I'm just, you know, by myself focusing. There's some that are just like dead on. I'm so happy. Well, with. especially especially compared to where you started on this adventure, um, I think I think there's real solid tangible progress. That's really awesome. And right. you said something 
you said something about liking the shape of uh, one of the the lines that you were mm. referencing on the jaw there. I think that that that's one of those stylistic choices that may make its way permanently into your your short hand of the head, which is really cool. It's cool to watch that evolution. Yeah, it's it's this angle here. Actually, this this entire thing where it goes off into the arch of the cranium there. Yeah, I love that kind of shape. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, part of this is focus. Yes, I will, I'll make drawing, better drawings on my own, that kind of thing. But I'm training that as well, training multiple things at once. But you're right, as far as the generalization, this is okay. But there's some, I believe there's some major points that I, I want to get uh, very close with this. Here's the major ideas that I think are really important to hit when you're creating, you know, an idealized structure of the head that you want to make into a similar portrait. I think these two dots, corners of the brow, the angle of the brow, basically that you've identified the same, you know, the same thing. This angle that goes from brow to the top of the ear, I think that's super important. Um, the center line, which which repeats that angle as well. And then honestly, from there, it's just like the overall relative size of the top of the, you know, from the top of the head to the brow and the brow to the chin. I feel like, like if you have that, in a relative situation, um, you can attach anything to this. May maybe the, the line that I love the most, you know, this thing right here. Identifying the front of the head versus the side of the head. Yeah. 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 I think those things, if you have that and you can see those in a three-dimensional way in a structural way you get them you know relatively close to what you're doing I, I think you can make any portrait really good after that all right let's keep going I think you uh, have uh, a good grasp of uh, the structure I mean your, your last sketch was as Josh was saying was uh, pretty pretty close it yeah. wasn't exact but it's it's uh you know it was your first sketch of today so you that's know, after true 100 heads after 100 heads you're gonna get you know much better and much quicker at uh your shorthand as to how to set it up to begin with true i yeah. gotta I gotta head out so uh take care and i will see you again tomorrow yeah, thanks for uh, for showing up, Doug. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, and by the way, um, starting Saturday to next Sunday, there will be no stream. So, but I'll repeat that tomorrow. But yeah. have a great day, Doug. Your, father, your father's visiting. Yeah, right. he's going to be in town today. I can't wait. <laughs> have fun with that. Oh yeah. Take care. Bye, Doug. Take care, Josh. You too. Doug's an awesome guy. Uh, it's very rare to find strangers that will support you. Uh, and especially strangers from across the globe that, uh, or, you know, thousands of miles away that become friends, you know. Well, I mean, that was us a few years ago. <laughs> yeah, it was, that's what I was going to say was, you know, um, I hope uh, it can happen a lot of times in my future because I mean like our friendship Josh has been just tremendous I mean like life changing really uh, I mean before we were friends I was in such a better way and then after friends man I had so much <laughs> issue <laughs> I, I do have a tendency to make you question major life decisions <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I kid you not. The other day I was thinking, you know what? Why am I just trying? Maybe I'll, I'll just go back to just 
having a, you know, a regular job every day, not trying to achieve anything. <laughs> It'd be, it's so much easier. I could play video games again, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It is so, and, and I can see why people just, you know, go that route and why I, I well, went that route for years and years, right? There's, there's a good philosophical argument here, though. Um, like, what is good enough? I mean, that true. You don't, you don't have to be a high achiever. Like myself, I'm, I'm motivated to do what I want to do. <laughs> right. Like that's that's about where it ends. I, I'm not motivated. Uh, I'm not, not motivated to be a, a billionaire or to work fifty hours a day. If anything. I enjoy my, my five hour work days, four days a week, you know. <laughs> Kinda nice. Yeah, it's uh enough. What is the quote? If um if you if you go for more you'll never have enough, but if you go for enough you can always you can reach always it. Get more. You can, oh you can always get more, okay. Yeah. Well uh, so many rabbit holes we could go down here. <laughs> I'll, I'll refrain today. Rabbit hole, rabbit hole. Well, so, you know, uh, I do have Streamlink, and I'm pretty sure that they have some kind of jingle that I can put together for oh. rabbit holes. That would be kind of cool. I'm not even going that to a, a, attempt the uh, jawline for this. Uh, the jawline is going to be a beard line here. <laughs> No, no, no. I'm going to challenge you on that. Do your best. Oh. Make your best guess so that you can understand the structure. I'm going to play video games. I just want to... Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I but, hear the little one in the background. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it sounded like... Uh, I, uh, yeah. Yeah, I... Uh, I just finished cleaning up a massive, massive, massive mess that I was not expecting. Which is, I mean, that's what happened. But, but really? how are you not expecting this? You have three kids. Well, <laughs> I think my son, until he turned four, really spoiled me on, like, following directions. <laughs> oh. Like, after four, he was like, I'm a little rebel. But uh, the the girls, the girls are have been rebellious since they were born. So they do not follow directions at all. And that's okay. They're, they're independent little creatures. I have no control over my, my children. Um, but they disregard my requests quite frequently. And this time I was like, hey, hey ladies, let's, let's get off of the table. Let's, let's step off of the table. We don't need to stand on the table. Oh, there goes my coffee onto my computer, onto the... Oh, no. There goes my tablet onto the... Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to unpack there, because I know you've done a lot of um, learning as far as child management. <laughs> Lack of terminology here, because I do not have kids, by the way, and I have no idea. Well, my, my Discord status is always set to taming feral humans. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's my best best analogy. I have tiny little feral creatures in my home that uh, do their best to undo everything I do. And uh, their uh, parents control Z, like you said once, right? Yeah. yeah. do that okay let's test this guy oh I wanted orange I thought I hit orange okay the two corners of the brow brow line top of ear to brow line and then the center line all the way down to let's see if I can if I can plot where the chin would end I would say it's gonna end there yeah, on, on the on the image itself, yeah, it's a bit bit easier to understand or to figure out. <laughs> that your your little one is weighing in on the 
what I'm doing. It's so funny. Oh, they're they're in a different room. <laughs> but yes, that that is her that you're hearing. Oh, I didn't do oh. the neck. Oh, darn it! Gotta go back. Let's do the neck. Um, center of the neck. I know it attaches, you know, back there behind the ear, like the. Maybe that's the way, you know, like where where in. Where in the world is uh, Carmen San Diego, right? Uh, where in the world is the spine, spinal column? Oof. So right there, I would say, because looking back behind the ear, it'd probably be actually, actually no. See, if we, if we think about this as a box, guys, right here, okay? We we basically have the beginnings of a box. So because we have a corner and we have uh, some edges. And then if I take this line and I reproduce it over here, I have the other side, okay? And then I can take this vertical line here and go over the top of the cranium and then drop it down on the other side, okay? And then maybe the back of the cranium is way back there. And then I could kind of think, nope, not right there. I could say that the hidden ear is can I get the height of the ear? I'm looking at angles here. I'm just matching the angles from the brow line and the side of the head line. I would say the hidden ear is on that side. You know, if you're looking through if you're looking through this head, right? Um now, why did I do that? Because this line here is also kind of the base of the skull. It would move forward a little bit as well. And I'm guessing a lot of this. I haven't done a ton of study on it. And I would say the spinal column fits way right back there. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Uh, well, I would say the spinal column fits right behind that instead of in front of it. Oh, behind it instead of in front of it. So instead of front of the ear, it's behind the ear. Uh, I think huh. I'm, I'm closing my eyes and visualizing right now. Um, Let's look at the 3D skull. Ah, look at this. You know, a nice little hole there. Yeah, it would it would be behind the ear because the ears eh, kind of like right on it. The ear is behind right the jaw. It, yeah. The ear would be right there. So it's kind of like right on the ear. Huh. That's interesting. Interesting. <laughs> all right, spinal column's there. I'm just gonna say that's where it's at. I'm gonna back up all this, these extra lines so it's not confusing when I do some tests. Control Z for days. It's it's like having children. <laughs> Touche. Touche. I'm gonna say there. That's a really thick neck, though. I think, man, I've really extended his beard way out now that I'm looking at this again. Okay. This All drawing right. is taking forever. Something something that you said earlier uh, was that you feel like you need this, 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 and this to, to be as close as possible for, for, well, I'm not sure for what. Like These are, these are self-imposed self-imposed a need um, <laughs> what so, so similar to self-imposed needs yeah yeah definitely yeah. i well, okay it, okay okay wait wait let, let me let me give you the the synopsis here because i think you don't have the whole idea maybe you do maybe you're like oh yeah this is a self-imposed need but um so if 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 i'm doing a loomis head here for this painting, so a particular painting, a particular portrait, and I'm trying to get an understanding of this form, which I will be doing in the future. How far off can my generalization be and still grab this understanding? Okay, so that's really the question I'm asking. So okay. it, it, if I'm tremendously far off, is that that's not gonna help me, right? I need to have some similarity with my reference or what eventually I want to get to, right? You know, that's that that's kind of my question. Okay. 
Where is that point? Well, well, each of us is going to have a different answer. So it's still a matter of preference. You have you, you as a, an individual, as an artist, are going to have to decide for yourself <laughs> what what is your margin of error because some artists would be like, you know, like I, I am. I am going to do a caricature here, and it is structurally sound. But no, 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 no. I want you to decide for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was right on the chin before. I had this really long chin, and I shortened it up because I thought it was too long. Darn it. Oh, I, d I didn't do the side of the skull either. Hold on. But I, I can see what you mean. You know, it's going to be up to me to determine what is yeah. enough to be able to get um, the, you know, to get what I want out of it kind of thing. I mean, I, my, my personal margin of error for the beginning is roughly 70 to 80 percent accurate. Um, right. I, I can see and that. That's, rough, that's roughly 70 to 80 percent accurate. If I... Then, I'm feeling squirrely. <laughs> I could just do a wild sketch and then keep carving into it. Um, True. Both. What, what were you saying? I think you cut out. You said both what? Oh, I said both have will. Ah. Yeah. They're fighting. I'm muting. Okay. So, I you know, for me, and you're right, you know, this is our own kind of um, determination, right? I, th I think this error here with one of, the, one of the two major lines is tremendously important. Um, so this is the brow to ear line. You, you can... And hopefully everyone can see this, like how, if, if I get this line off, like I'm way up here with this, then the ear is off. Um, <clears throat> luckily I got the placement of the, the neck correct, although it's kind of vertically in the wrong area. But those two major lines, when you have those off, kind of everything is built off of that. I think the way to fix this, and maybe in blue, what I'm going to start doing is creating uh, kind of an improvement idea, right? Remember, the feedback loop is you create, you test, and then you fish, fix, slash, learn, slash, improve, right? Uh, well, maybe I could just remove fix, so learn and improve. But identifying with each one of these, and this is the most important part of getting the, the feedback loop, is it's not just doing this and going on to the next one really quickly and just not thinking about it, not looking at your errors. Too often artists ignore their errors and say, no, it's a good drawing, it's good enough, you know, I'll just keep moving on, keep, moving, keep doing my own thing, and you're never improving, you're just doing a bunch of drawings that eventually you will see that you don't like. <clears throat> So I want to identify a method for improving this. And I think the method is uh, focus longer on uh, the two major lines. So that's what I need to do. So these two, well, I could say the three first things. So I set the points, um, I set the widths, I figure out the center of that one and then these angles spinning longer with those would help the entirety of the head um, getting those, those ideas and of course you know I'm matching a reference here okay um, now you could argue if I remove this that this head looks fine you know I mean it, it looks like it's got some really cool uh, uh, perspective in it and I even w was able to use it to find the other side of the ear and blah 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 maybe I could make it work for that so you that's an argument that you could have I want it to be a bit more close so my definition my definition is I want this closer okay at least those two so lines I'm not 
I want to I want to throw an al alternate yeah. exercise. Yeah. And, you know, you're not a grown up baby. You're right. Um, <laughs> I want I want to throw a, an alternate exercise at you to see if that might uh, be something that you could play with, not to not to slow your drawing down yeah. to focus yeah. longer on those things, but to train that very 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 yeah. specific yeah. sub sub skill as quickly as possible. So if no, you want to focus you on yeah. instead of uh, instead of focusing on the entire head, if you're wanting to get those angles correct. What I would recommend is uh, pull up your reference, stare at it for five seconds, then hide your reference and try to just draw that angle. Yeah, that's a pretty cool get, practice. Get very micro with it. Um, get micro with that exercise. And then once you've done 20, 30, 40 of those, I mean, check your work every time, but once you've done 20, 30, 40 of those, add complexity. Right. So then you focus on the, the corner, the angles, and then the front plane of the face. Then the corner, the angle, the front plane of the face, and the jawline. The corner, the angle, the front plane of the face, and, and my, know, wh whichever. My, my argument against that would be, I like this is a perfect indication of the egg of the cranium right there. Yep. My my argument against that is, yeah, I could, I could train it as a like a sub kind of training thing, but what what is the difference in time that we're looking at here? I, I think th that difference is fairly minimal, honestly. I, I think it would be seconds uh, off of this drawing, not minutes. And I don't think that that's worth. That's true. I don't think that would be worth uh, doing a whole separate kind of exercise. Because if I did that, even for seconds of, I, I would be okay. Now, now to work on just this this particular nose shape now for forty drawings. You know, get that, get that, get that, get that, get that. And it's kind of like, all right. <laughs> Eventually, if I did that everywhere, which I wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't either. But 